Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. In this episode, we discuss family legacies, which got me thinking about life and legacy planning. What is it? Why is it important? And why should an entrepreneur care? According to Investopedia, legacy planning is a financial strategy that provides people the bequeath, which means to leave a personal estate or one's body to a person or other beneficiary via a will, their assets to a loved one or next of kin after death. These affairs are usually planned and organized by a financial advisor. Legacy planning is much like estate planning, but you can also pass on less tangible items such as imparting certain valuables to loved ones or establishing a focus on charitable giving according to Prudential. Legacy planning is created so an individual can help the entrepreneur's small businesses or other assets that require maintenance after the entrepreneur has passed. Legacy planning can also help with setting up a trust in order to skip probate, which is the legal process in which a will is reviewed to determine whether it is valid and authentic, and that process can take months or even years. According to Caring.com, only 4 of 10 Americans have a will or living trust in place. I don't. However, since the beginning of the pandemic, estate planning has seen a 50% increase in those 18 to 34. Additionally, Americans who have a serious case of COVID-19 were 66% more likely to have a will than those who had not have COVID-19. Sadly, one in three Americans who have no will or living trust claim they don't have enough assets to leave behind, according to the same survey by Caring.com. We cannot leave behind a financial legacy if we are not financially secure enough to amass a legacy to begin with. And that is why a legacy planning is important. Legacy planning also involves protecting loved ones from financial risk, especially if there are those dependent that rely on the entrepreneur's support. Seeking life insurance is an aspect of legacy planning, and having life insurance can provide additional financial protection for dependents. I am not a financial advisor, but I would highly recommend seeking one out, building a trusting relationship, and start planning your legacy. This starts with gathering information about assets, bank accounts, investment accounts, real estate, insurance policy, and other information. It is very important to think about who the assets will be left with, including donations such as leaving a property to a charity, like a car or a house. Know the laws, local, state, and federal laws. Federal laws will apply consistently regardless of your location, but state and local laws will differ depending on where the entrepreneur resides. But the most important thing is for the entrepreneur to leave exact instructions on how the legacy is to be executed by the trust. I am talking down to the T and work with a trusted professional to ensure wishes remain in accordance with the legacy plan. And that's why an entrepreneur should care. We are in a time of high inflation, something 9 of 10 Americans worry about according to a recent poll by the New York Times. When inflation hits, many of us make difficult financial decisions, often postponing even abandoning the idea of an estate planning, according to Caring.com. This message is not just for entrepreneurs. Just over half the post-graduate degree holders have a legacy plan in place. In 2001, the percentage of high school graduates with a legacy plan was only 31%, yet still higher than those with a two-year associate's degree at 25%. As a former guest once said, builders build. But you cannot build without a plan. Plan accordingly, entrepreneurs. After all, it's your legacy. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. My next guest paid homage to her daughter, a trip to Paris, and heirloom toys with this whimsical traditional toy shop located in Portland, Oregon, and Los Angeles, California. Founded in 2016, she is the owner of Mercy Milo. Please welcome Caroline Rodriguez. This episode is sponsored in part by Burnside Knives, essential tools for outdoor enthusiasts and working professionals like yourself. Visit BurnsideKnives.com. Your knife says a lot about you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. 
This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with Caroline Rodriguez. How are we doing, Caroline? Great. How are you? Good. I'm excited because we are going to talk about toys, but not just any toys. We're actually going to talk about how local artists are actually helping create these toys. But first, let's introduce the world to Caroline before we start talking about that Marcy Mallow. First, Caroline, please introduce the world to you. Go ahead and give yourself an introduction. Um, sure. Um, my name is Caroline Rodriguez. I am the founder of Mercy Milo, a curated, a highly curated toy store in Los Angeles and now currently in Portland, Oregon. Now, so where let's let's kind of uh let's talk first about what the, where the idea came from because I actually I did read about it, but I really want to hear it come from you. So, where did the idea of the toy store come from? Sure, um, my family actually um are, are my immigrant family actually um they came to the United States uh, back in the eighties. Uh, they started a, a retail um, store in Los Angeles. First, my father started like a clothing store, and then my grandparents started uh, a small little children's store in south of LA. So I grew up a family of retailers, and I, growing up, I've, I was always like basically living in their stores. Um, <laughs> I grew up in it. I was merchandising the windows. I was doing some of the buying with them. I was helping them um, up until the age 18, and so... Growing up in that environment, of course, naturally, I wanted to have my own retail store. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted until my daughter Milo was born, and she was basically the inspiration behind the children's store and also my grandfather who owned that small children's store in South LA. So it just somehow like happened and I felt this rush of inspiration after she was born and I realized that that, that we were missing you know, a highly curated toy store that anyone could go to and just feel the magic when they step in and just, you know, like these old traditional toy stores are no longer around. You see them in Europe here and there, but I feel like toy stores were dying, you know, in yeah. the whole retail industry. And and everyone was either shopping at Toys R Us or some or Target or a major, you know, retail chain store. And I felt like there was like this need for just an old school traditional toy store that carried local makers, eco-friendly toys, things that were good for your children. And how did, how did your family, you know, you said your, your family kind of migrated here. How did your family eventually get into the toy industry originally? So the funny thing is, I think my grandfather was just so into um, the, his local community as well and the children that grew up in it. And he felt that there was a need as well. And so he, he didn't really want to go into the same type of business as my father did. Um, he didn't want to do fashion. And so he, he, he just decided he wanted to do toys and children's clothing. So that's how, um, you know, that, that all started and, and he built a very successful business for 20 years and he ended up having lung cancer and passing away. But, um, yeah, he, he basically all his life <laughs> had a, had a retail store. So, so but the original grandpa was a fashion designer. Is that what you're saying? No, he was actually an engineer. He started L. Do you know LG, um, the South Korean? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So he was an engineer. He, him and a couple of his friends started LG back in the days. Wow. Uh, and he ended up selling the company um, when uh, the war broke out. It was very long, like very long time ago. And he ended up moving. They they immigrated from South Korea to Iran. And he could because he got a government position. And so they moved our entire family there and he had to sell his he basically had to sell his company. And so now LG today is massive. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, and we always talk about that. We're like, what if you never sold that company? <laughs> we would still have that company. But yeah, um, because of safety and just, you know, like, you know, the concerns with war and poverty um, back in the days in South Korea, uh, they fled to Iran. And so how did, how did you eventually make it here to the States? How did your family eventually go from South so, Korea to Iran? 
So my, my dad was around 21 at that time and he decided to immigrate to Australia because he had a bunch of friends there. And so he, he went to Australia and then he saved, he worked a bunch of little jobs and saved up enough money to move to the States. So he moved to California back in the eighties, early eighties. And then he started working, um, at a local grocery store and a liquor store and he would just save up money. Um, you know, every chance that he could get to basically bring the rest of his family over. And so he started slowly, like every year he would slowly bring like one of his sisters or, you know, my, my grandparents. And finally, eventually he brought all of them over and then started saving again um, to open his very first retail store wow. in central LA. Yeah. <laughs> so it's your traditional like immigrant story where you know they come to the states for a better life with nothing um and they basically grew nothing into something that is incredible now how you know, obviously starting, <laughs> starting a business is extremely difficult correct uh, how 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 difficult was it to start your business even with mm-hmm. your experience in the retail world how difficult was it Oh, very difficult. I actually still work a full-time job (laughs) Um, as an art director. Um, Yeah, it's, I I don't, you know, I wish someone would have told me how difficult it would have been or else I honestly truly don't think I would have started it, but I'm grateful for where I'm at now and where I am going. It is really hard. You dedicate so much of your time and efforts to something that you love so dearly, and that's your small business. And and the funny thing is, I I had very little um, money and funding. I'm all self funded. I had a little bit of my savings that I had, you know, um, working my full time job and. I had a bunch of credit cards and I basically maxed out my credit cards and used whatever cash I had on hand to start the small um, curation of toys on our website. So we started out first online, um, actually. So we were online for about six months and then we found our magical space in Los Angeles in Highland Park. And... um, Eventually, I signed the lease, um, and the day that I signed my lease, I actually got laid off from my job. Oh, wow. And it was one of the most scariest moments of my life because I had just signed this, like, lease, and I had to pay rent every month, and we had just, like, literally started the online store, and we were barely making making it, really, and I had, I, I just... I just put so much of, you know, my husband and I just put so much love and care into the space. We painted the walls ourselves. We did all, we built all the shelving. Like we just, you know, we, we, we scrapped, scraped like every little thing and penny we had to like to the store. And then we opened it on, um, I, I remember that day clearly, like I opened it in the summer in July and there was a line out the door. Wow. I was so shocked because we had just really just started the, the company and, and I had no idea that I, we had these followers on Instagram that would show up on our very first day. And, you know, they were very excited to have us in the community. And it really like I, that I just remember clearly that evening, like me and my husband sitting on the floor in the store and we were just like crying our eyes out. <laughs> That and we incredible. were just so emotional because, you know, I, we, I'm the breadwinner of the family. So losing the job was really difficult for us financially. And then like having to, you know, pay rent was really scary. <laughs> and um, we just somehow made it, you know, and it's been six years now. Like this is our sixth year in Highland Park. And, you know, I'm, I'm just so grateful for, you know, everyone that has, you know, stepped foot in, into that store and like have like loved it so yeah i'm really really truly thankful for that now you mentioned you know, you're kind of talking about financing so you've essentially grow have grown this entire company through the grassroots effort is that correct yeah so i basically maxed out two of my credit cards and had like maybe five thousand dollars cash <laughs> five to maybe eight thousand dollars cash and i basically you know grew it from that to now what it is today 
was I'm I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna say yes, but I just want to still want to ask. During this time, was 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 there ever a moment of self doubt? Oh, I I mean, I still have moments of self doubt. I'm always like, what am I doing? Do I need to close the store? Especially, you know, um, since the pandemic started <clears throat> two years ago, we were so nervous. We had to shut our um, our brick and mortar down for a whole year to keep the community safe. We had, you know, um, our online store, which was <clears throat> such a blessing because if we didn't have our online store, we would probably had to have closed the, the business for sure. But um, we had so many people supporting us through the online store. That was really amazing. We had a lot of pickup orders. Um, so that's how we were able to survive the pandemic. And then now with everything that's happening, you know, globally with the war in Ukraine, women's rights being taken away, um, you know, just all the, the mass shootings, you know, there's so much with the coming recession, there's so much uncertainty that like, you know, the very last thing pe that's on people's minds are shopping, you know, for toys. Yeah. <laughs> so we're dealing with this moment in time this year where, you know, things are very looking very um, unpredictable. Like we're not even sure, you know, if we're going to make it this year. Um, sales ha um, have declined tremendously. Things are up and down. Our landlord in our Highland Park store is selling the building that we might eventually be kicked out soon. There's a lot that's happening this year and there's so much uncertainty for our business. Um, and it's really hard and, and I always try and push, you know, and push for supporting small businesses because right now is the time to support, you know, um, anyone and everyone that's local stores, you know, um, local businesses, because I, I just see it every day, like the store closing and that store closing and it's just really hard right now. Yeah. You know, and that's, you know, we we're talking about, uh, before we came on the air of, the original concept for the the podcast and why it was created, right? You, you, throughout the pandemic, we're seeing all these small businesses having to close their short doors and shutter their windows uh, due to financial restraints and, and so on and so forth. And and to be completely honest, you and I actually met on Instagram uh, because you actually had a plea, right? To, hey, we're still open. Uh, please, please come visit. And I saw that post and I remember I reshared it and I was like, hey, why don't you come on the show? Because this is the exact reason I created for individuals such as you to come on the show, talk about what we're doing, talk about what you're selling so we can kind of help build your, build your brand together. Right. And so folks that are listening again, this is, these are, these are real life people. These are real life and entrepreneurs is, is just a word, but we, these are individuals with, with, you know, families and, you know, trying to make careers out of this. And so, your support as an individual purchasing from a small business versus, you know, Amazon, Jeff Bezos kind of thing is really does go a long way. I, I, I truly can't express how far that does go. And, and it is very difficult, you know, Carolyn, you're mentioning, we're going through a bit of a transition in our world right now where there's a lot of, a lot of static, right? There's, there's the mass shootings, there's the women's rights, there's, there's um, ethnic rights. There's just a lot of things. There's wars. There's just a lot of hatred and, and miscommunication going on. And one, there's nothing better to feel like I, I can't express it even more, but there's nothing that makes you feel better than getting back involved in their community during, it, during a time like this, getting back with individuals, like-minded individuals that really do want to make a better and a, a bit of a difference in the community. And they're everywhere. They're, they're in every single community throughout this entire global we have, right? They're not just little bits of pieces anywhere. They're everywhere, right? And they're probably next door. And you're probably one of them that might be listening to this show right now. And so please, please take an opportunity to get involved in your community, reach out to some of these small businesses and really kind of help support them because your support goes so long, uh, goes a long way and really making a difference in a lot of these entrepreneurs lives. Now, Caroline, is this your first business? Um, actually, no, I, I, <laughs> I, I was a maker before um, this. So my background actually comes from fashion. Um, I, I started a, a small jewelry company called Rebel and Quill and I was based out of Brooklyn at the time. 
I um, made, you know, I, I was a metalsmith, so I would make um, my own jewelry out of brass and fine, uh, fine metals. And I started doing that for a little bit, and I sold to free people and anthropology. And, you know, my business was going, but it was, you know, it was more of a side business more than anything because I was still working my full-time job as well. And I didn't really take that business as seriously as I do now with Mercy Milo. Um, and, and it was definitely a, a very big lesson for me um, on, you know, commitment and just dedication. And I, <laughs> I'm sorry. No problem. Uh, and and so with with that being said, I, I I've met so many amazing creative um, makers uh, along the way by having this brand of mine in the past, and and on some of these makers that I met during my past business, I'm actually collaborating with now in this current business, which I think is amazing. So those connections are still there, and 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 that whole um, community of creative artists and makers. So it was really nice to have that, you know, before having Mercy Milo. Yeah, it sounds like you've kind of been, you know, an entrepreneur since day one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've always wanted to do, to like build something from nothing, just like my parents did. So that's what, always been one of my goals. <laughs> what, what, uh, what continued to motivate you? You know, it's just that passion and, and, and the love for what you do. I love I love doing what I do every day. I love curating and finding amazing artists and makers and brands that I could work with. I love sharing, like sharing it to the world to me. I feel so much gratification because, you know, sometimes I'll get messages and DMs from my customers with a photo of their child loving and playing with the toy that they got from our store and like that truly makes my day like it like when i get those messages it, it motivates me it, it makes me feel like i'm doing something right you know and i'm bringing joy into this this little child's life i'm, I'm bringing joy to the parents and, you know and and when i see the parents and and they bring their parents and when i see the children walk into the store and their eyes just like glisten and light up. It really makes me so happy. And I think that's like my biggest motivation, you know, um, is just seeing the happiness and seeing these kids grow up in the store. I remember like the first day we opened, some of the kids that came in that very first day were two years old and now they're there's like seven now and it's so amazing to see them consistently come in you know um and and just seeing them grow up is is so awesome so yeah it's it's really satisfying <laughs> i love it now what would you say you know there's obviously been quite a bit that's gone on the last couple of years but what would you say has been you know some of the hardest parts about starting this business you know i think it's just really the hardest part is truly like not knowing if you're going to make ends meet at the end of the month. Like if you're going to pay your bills, I think it's really hard because you always have your days that are good. And then you have some days that are really bad. It's just never consistent and you just never know, you know, um, what can happen. And so for me, now that I have, you know, I have, I have staff now, I have employees, and it's not just me that I have to worry about. I have to worry about my, my crew, and they're like family to us, right? And a lot of them are single moms, or a lot of them are mothers as, as well. And, and for me, I, I, just, I just know that I worry a lot, and I wonder, like, if I'm able to, you know, help them out every month. Like, am I able to give them the hours that they need? Am I able to support and provide for them? and pay their payroll like those and am i able to pay rent those are like a lot of a lot, i think a lot of small business owners and entrepreneurs worry about it, it's not that we're just worrying about ourselves we're also worrying about others yeah yeah it's very true now what would you say would be some of the easiest parts of going through this process i honestly i don't think there is an easy i'm, I'm just being honest i don't think I don't think there is anything easy. I'm sorry. Hold on yep. a second. Is 
sorry. Sorry about that. My dog was barking. Um, I honestly, truly don't think that there is anything easy about having a business. And that's, that's the, like the cold truth. <laughs> I, I wish, I, I wish there was, but there really isn't. And I think a lot of people need to understand what it entails to be an entrepreneur and what it entails to have a small business. You know, with, with it, you know, throughout this conversation, you kind of mentioned, you know, some of the difficulties and, and, and you are passionate about these things. What, what continues to motivate you to continue to get, keep going? You know, it's really, it's really every single one of our customers, just like the way that, the way that the shop just really inspires a lot of people and brings so much happiness to their homes. It, it truly is. I mean, that's what's really motivating me and getting me through the day, to be honest. When I get those emails, when I get those messages, when I get, you know, when I see the customers in person talk about how much they love our shop and how much the shop has meant to them, that means so much to us. That means so much to me. And I know that means so much to our staff. And, and I think that's what really gets us going every single day. Now, as, as a small business owner, you've kind of mentioned some of the things, but what would you say really keeps you up at night as a small business owner? You know, I'm in, you know, it's just really, really just everything that's happening around the world keeps me up at night, you know, because every little thing affects a business whether it's, you know, especially I, I'm such an advocate for every social justice, you know, um, situation. And, and for me, I want to do what's right. And if that means I, I, I can utilize my business to support these causes, I'm going to do that no matter what it takes. And so, for example, with the mass shootings that happened recently it really it really affected business of course who's gonna want to shop right now i mean these are these are especially parents these are children that are dying in school that that don't need to be dying in school you know and and these are all like things that every single parent would worry about right yeah. i mean i'm sure you you were you worry about this oh as well. definitely definitely i've certainly made my opinion uh known about my you know disgust of what happened certainly and, yeah and, and so you know with me like having this small business i'm always like what can my business do you know what can my business do to help the situation i want to do everything in my power to help and so I, I decided, you know, we're going to, we're going to donate, like, we can't donate all of everything we have every single day, because we have to pay our bills, and we have to pay our payroll. But what I was thinking is, what if I could, what if I'm able to take a percentage of what we make, or even like 100% of our profits, you know, to donate to a cause that's that, re, that means so much to us. And I think, I think what it is for, for us is that we're not, we really truly want to help, you know, um, by using our business. And, and if that's something that can make any kind of difference in the world, then, then that, that's what we're going to do. And that, and it, and we'll do whatever it takes. You know what I mean? Like, I think that it's really important to try to utilize your business to try and help whatever causes that, you know, that mean so much to you and your family. You know, how you're talking about the business, um, how do you continue to brand the business? How do you continue to market the business? And you're talking about some of the social justices that you align with. How do you continue to build this, this brand? Uh, I'm so glad you asked this because <laughs> I, I'm very confused as well. Cause I don't, I honestly, <laughs> I, I might come from a marketing background and I, I, I art direct um, camp, big campaigns, but I truly don't know how I do it with my own business, which I think it's pretty funny because I should be able to know. 
um, how to do these things, but I don't put in enough effort for sure. And the way I've built my business is through solely through Instagram and solely through word of mouth. And, and now that with the algorithm hurting small businesses, I'm, I'm, I'm working around and f trying to figure out ways to, um, you know, to market. I, 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 someone told me that I should be on TikTok and I feel really old <laughs> and I feel like I, I don't know what I'm doing when I'm yep. on TikTok. For I sure. don't either. Certainly. <laughs> so I, I feel like what doing you know yep. I don't I don't know what I'm doing and 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 someone told me you have to start making reels and yeah. so we started making these reels and I actually started having my husband make these reels because he works for the company full-time and he, he it's pretty funny because he he makes some really funny videos and <laughs> and and I'm like but this hasn't gotten any likes or hasn't gotten any views so I'm I'm really confused if you have any answers please share those with me because oh, I, I just don't know how. You know, it's kind of funny. I actually recently did an episode not too long ago talking about the um, adjustments of this, the social media algorithms. And I would, I'd, I'm actually interested now, how has the social media algorithms, the change recently affected your business? It's affected us tremendously. We are down 50%. And how, what, what exactly, so let's kind of get into that. How did, how did it, what it changed and then how is it affecting your business? So what has changed is normally we would post, you know, whatever is new or, you know, just trying to get people informed about like all the new arrivals that we have. Unfortunately, the limitation and the limits of, you know, being visible on Instagram is very low. No one's seeing it. No one's seeing our posts. No one's seeing our stories, you know, whereas before everyone would see it and you would see traffic coming onto the site you would see traffic coming into the stores now it's like there's no one coming online there's no one coming in stores because they don't know what we have they're they're unable to see it there's no visibility and so with that being said it's it's tremendously affecting our business you know i'm i'm just I've, i'm trying to also understand it as well and, and, you know, so the folks that are listening, you know, it, a lot of these small businesses and one of the things are kind of struggling with is marketing. I think everybody wants to go viral, right? And everybody wants to have that viral video. Uh, viral means like anything over like some, I think it's like 1.2 million views or something like that. So viral is very high. But even trying to get the hundreds or thousands of, uh, of people to view your item, especially, you know, in the social media world, because that is a great way to market your product and to the masses, especially folks that, you know, like your page and they should be seeing it. Right. But what's happening, uh, it, it really is a unique change in the algorithm where they really put in preference on, um, family shared and not business shared. So folks that are listening, if you do sh see items out there from one of your favorite small business companies that recently posted, you sharing it will actually allow that that organization to get a lot more views, not only because it's actually being seen by your network, but because the Facebook algorithm, the way it's kind of working now, it, or the meta, however you want to call it, is the more times one of your friends and family shares one of the posts, whether it be from a brand or a business, that brand and business tends to get, you know, this the algorithm does a little calculation and it gets a little bit more brownie points, which it means it gets a little bit more views. And so folks that are listening, if you do see some of these small businesses, please like their posts, please reshare them. Uh, I'm, and if you, I'm constantly trying to reshare small business posts on mine, the Shades of Entrepreneurship, uh, please follow that and share as much as you want as well. Now, now, Caroline, for the listeners at home, give them some advice because you've been an entrepreneur for a while now. So you, you've kind of been doing this for some time. What's some advice you wish you knew coming into this world of small business? You know, I wish someone told me <laughs> the very truth. You know, there, there's a lot of um, inspiration behind being your own entrepreneur. There's definitely a lot of inspiration behind having your own vision and brand, but that all takes so much work and effort. And I think a lot of people think it's so easy to start a business and, and a lot of them tend to fail because they're not prepared. 
And, and, and my advice is to always prepare yourself, whether that's financially, have a plan, make sure that you know what you want in year one, know what you want in year five, and know what you want to do in year 10. And, and never give up. Honestly, a lot of businesses closing, it's, it's all, a lot has to do with just the fact that it just takes a lot of persistence and, and a lot of patience and, and just know that you can't just grow a business overnight. It doesn't work like that. You can't just go viral overnight. You have to slow and steady wins the pace. That's, that's my motto all the time. It's like, we grew, we didn't grow our business overnight. A lot of people think we did, but we didn't. We, we started very, very small and we, we went to every single fair, every single market, every single school. We like, we, we promoted ourselves within the community and we grew it slowly um, and, and steadily. And so it, it takes a lot of patience and I don't think we're still there yet. I think we're still, like for me, once we hit, hit year 10, that's when I'll know we've made it. <laughs> yeah. So right now for us, like we're still growing and we're still doing it really slowly and we're doing it with a lot of intention, you know, um, in mind. So I just, I highly suggest a lot of patience and know that you're not failing if you don't get something right away. Um, you, it, you're just... It, it just takes a little bit of time. You know, throughout this conversation, you've been mentioning community often. Why is your community so important to you? You know, it's funny you say that. We left our, our um, amazing community community in Highland Park for Portland. And I realized, I realized then and, and when we moved here, I was like, we, we have to start all over again. I told my husband, we don't know anyone here. <laughs> We're so brand new. And, and he told me, he was like, do you not remember when we opened our Highland Park store where we knew no one and we built this amazing community through our business? And, and, and what's, what's crazy is that every single one of our customers that have stepped foot into that Highland Park store are now some of our dearest friends. And, and I think that's why it means so much to me because we're talking about a community that will uplift you and that will take care of you and that will protect you. And, and that's what we wanna be for our, our, our customers. That's what we wanna do for our community. And, and I think there's so much love behind it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's just the, the support is so enormous. Like all the other small businesses too in that community in Los Angeles, like we all know each other, like all the small business owners, we all know each other. We all support each other. We all uplift each other. The customers there, they're like family to us. Like we, we see them all the time. We've become really good friends with them. And, and if one of our customers needs help, like, we would 100, 110% support and help in any way possible. And I think that means so much more to us than anything. You know, what do you, I was reading online on, on your website, your mission statement is, you know, our goal is to support local artists and small businesses to help them grow and succeed. And, and you also mentioned when you were growing your business, you're going out to these different fairs and different schools. How important was networking to build your business? very, very important. And I think, um, you know, we're still, we're still networking. We're still meeting amazing makers and artists and brands here in Portland. And we're still meeting other small business owners as well. I think it's, it's very, very important for your business to really get to know everyone else within your community. And, and just to know that, you know, you have that kind of support, but also you can be a support for them. Nice. Now, now we're in Oregon, so I'm going to give you an opportunity here. I want you to right here on air, go ahead and ask the folks that are listening. What do you need help with right now? How can our community help you and how can we become part of your community? (laughs) 
just come by the store and meet us and, and, and have these conversations with us and just really just know how I, I just I want other small business owners to know that like we're here to support them as well. Um, every single chance and moment that I get, I'm always going into a small business here and I'm like introducing myself. I want to get to know them. I want to get to know everyone here. Um, I also want to get to know get want to get to know all our customers here. I'm also looking for other local artists and makers here that want to sell sell in our store. Like we're here to support and 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 I would love that support back. Excellent. Now where where is your brick and mortar here in the Portland location and for those folks who are down in the LA, where is the location in LA? The the location here in Portland is off of Broadway, Northeast Broadway. We're in the Irvington district. Um in in Los Angeles, we are in Highland Park, Los Angeles, um, close to Pasadena. Perfect. And folks, I got to tell you, the stuff online is super cute. I'm checking out the Danish rain boots right now for my daughter, to be honest with you. The green Danish rain boots or the Laurel oh, yes. Man, yes. those are adorable. I'm, <laughs> those are so cute. <laughs> so, and, and, and I was looking at the toys and there's like over there's like 58 pages of items, folks. And these are all what, what's the beauty of it is like you're mentioning, you're curated, you know, gifts from from local artists and, and people. So when you're purchasing from this store, you're not just supporting a small business, but you're also supporting a lot of local um, artists as well. Now, Caroline, how can the folks support your team online? Where is your social media? What is your website? How can they help uh, support your team? So we are online 24 um, seven under shopmercymilo.com. And our Instagram is at shopmercymilo. You can find us online. You can find us at both locations. Um, it would make it would truly make me happy if people would come in the store because it's just such a magical store. I like it. I like it. Well, Caroline, thank you so much for the time. This is such a great conversation. I'm just really uh, impressed with all the information that you kind of provided and where your family has kind of come to and, and where you're at today. And where we're going to continue to go, because I'm, I'm really excited. I certainly will be stopping by the store. I'll introduce you to myself as well as my daughter. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Make sure Vienna gets uh, gets her uh, toys out of there, because that kid does love um, shopping as much as her mom. It's it's That's quite amazing. It's, we're going to have a bunch of up and coming events with local illustrators and um, book authors as well. So I'm super excited about that. Um, we're having a local maker from Seattle come to town to do a clay class uh, where kids can make their own ceramics. So I'm really, really excited about that as well. That is so cool. Again, shop Mercy Mile. That's M-E-R-C-I-M-I-L-O. And for those folks that have not yet, please subscribe to the newsletter. You'll actually have more information about Shop Mercy Milo on there as well. Directions to their website and information about the podcast episode. Caroline, thank you so much again for coming on the show today. It's such a great conversation. I really do appreciate it. For those folks listening at home, please follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or Instagram. And thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.